Good afternoon and welcome to the Celtic Way. It's the afternoon lineup reaction, Celtic versus Hearts, the preview. And also we might talk about a central defender, Ryan, who's making the news indeed. I'm Tony Haggerty at the Haggerty 10 on the Exeter Twitter handle. And I'm delighted to be joined by Ryan McGinley at the Ryan McGinley on the Exeter Twitter handle. And he's somewhere outside Parkhead in his car about to speak to me and then get out and go and watch a game of association football in a Scottish Premiership featuring Celtic Hearts. OK, Ryan, we'll go dive straight into it. There's the team for today. Yourself and myself both got nine. We thought Bernardo would play and we thought Maida would play. The manager thought otherwise. Obviously didn't watch his yesterday. He must have missed it because of that sore throat of his. <laughs> and he's, he's put in Turnbull and Mikey Johnston. Your first thoughts about the team, Ryan? Um, I thought there'd be a wee bit more changes than that, if I'm being honest with you. It's players that we've uh, we've all seen before. It's players that have struggled to impress over the past couple of weeks, which may be down to the fact, which may in turn point to a player like David Turnbull coming back into the team because nobody's taking those spots as things stand. Um, you know, Mikey Johnson out in the right wing again. How many games is that now? He started in a row three or four. I can't remember the last time he did that. For Celtic, so that counts for something, I guess. But you know, he's been given another opportunity. I thought that um, his time would have been limited, severely limited, after that game against Kilmarnock uh, on Sunday last week. But he's getting another chance to uh, to stake a claim to be Celtic, one of Celtic's first choice wingers. Um, you know, he's playing out of position, as somebody said yesterday. Um, he's playing on the right wing rather than the left wing. But a very, very interesting team. Probably the news with regard to the teams who isn't there than who it is, um, and that's probably what we'll talk about more so, but I'm glad to see that Cameron Carter-Vickers is back in the side, deserves to be partnered alongside Scales, Scales has not put a foot wrong to be honest, um, and Kyogo, uh, he scored in his last eight games against uh, against Hearts, I think that's the record anyway, it's either eight goals or eight games. It's I of... think he scored eight goals certainly against them, as it might be 10 or 11 appearances against Hearts, so he knows where the net is against Hearts, so that's a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah, he... um, Continue that today. Yeah, yeah, and you know he's had a wee bit of a blip in his form. I, I thought he played okay on Wednesday, but he, he never got in the, the, the score sheet. And strikers are judged on how many goals that they can get um, when they're leading the line. Kyogo's not scored in quite a few. I think the last time that he scored was would that be in the Aberdeen game? He, it will be the six 0 game. Yeah, the one he yeah, cut back. So it has been Matt O'Reilly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a while since he scored, so you know you're you're hoping that he can right those wrongs today and get a couple of goals in the score sheet and make him feel good about himself because you know there's big games coming up. Um, every game is important just now in the festive period, so if he can get back on form leading us into this festive period, then it can only be good for the squad moving forward. Exactly, good to see Maida back in the side, but I would rather he started like you. I know. The plus side is that Mikey Johnson is starting games and getting that extended run in the team, but I'm not so sure that he merits a start today. Just that's my own personal feeling, Ryan. I don't know if you echo that sentiment or uh, you. I know you wanted Maida back in because he came straight back into your starting eleven, didn't he? Yeah, I felt because because of the uh, John Kennedy's uh, speech about him when he was calling him a machine, <laughs> the bit to get back in the side, um, the fact that he had to put a bit of reins on him to. Uh, to keep him calm with regard to getting back in the side. I'm surprised that he's not starting. He's one of these players that I think if he, if he's fit and he's ready to play, then he starts. And, that, and I thought he was quite a divisive figure when he was fit the first time um, because, you know, a lot of people were talking maybe his lack of creativity in the team. But Celtic have missed him when he's been gone. He sets the tempo. He sets everything. Yeah. sets the, the mindset. He's got that winning mentality. He pushes. He presses. And I think he's been sorely missed on either side, either on the left wing or the right wing, wherever he plays. You know, there's no there's no suggestion of him moaning because he's playing out of position. The fact is he's playing and he's going to give his 100%. He, he'll give absolutely everything for the cause and for the team. So he'll be a good player to come off the bench for the last half hour, I, I presume. Um, yeah, I, there, is, there is danger on the wings for Celtic. You know, Mikey Johnson's good 1v1. But at the same time, we've been saying this for the past couple of games now. I want to see a breakout game from Mikey Johnson today. As we, we spoke about, that's one of the wingers now back. Abada will be back soon as well. He's a couple of weeks away. So, you know, the clock is ticking for Mikey Johnson here. I think he's only got six months left in his deal as well. So, 
he's he's got to pull it out the bag here or face falling down the pecking order when Maeda returns fully and Abada returns fully as well. So it's up to him. Yeah. The bonus is on him to make a difference today. Yep, I think uh, lots of Celtic supporters will be expecting a big game from him today or certainly a more valid contribution that, that he's made to be made today and you know in the games that he has started so far. Now, one player making the news, Ryan, can't avoid it. Need to talk about it. And it's Wednesday's match winning hero, Gustav Lagerbielka. Now, there's a report in one of the papers today saying that Celtic are willing to sell him and willing to listen to offers. Did you wake up and find yourself astonished by that? But I guess it's what uh, John Kennedy was alluding to yesterday but never actually named him. Yeah, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised this morning because I did hear the news last night. I was still up late last night. <laughs> um, so I'd heard that news. It was breaking on uh, that specific news outlet last night before Overnight, this morning. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so I've, I've had a, a good sort of few 12, 13 hours to think about it. Um, yeah, it's a very, very puzzling situation that Celtic find themselves in. I always said it was going to be puzzling, given the way that the um, the hierarchy of the centre-back position is at the moment. Um, Carter Vickers is too good in that sense that he will start every game that he's fit and ready to play. He's just head and shoulders above everybody in the league, never mind at Celtic. He's the, he's the premium defender in the league. He's... He makes it look like a, a playground game out there at times when he plays for Celtic. That's the reason why he's in there. Scales is there down to form. It's always going to be Carter Vickers and somebody else until Carter Vickers either leaves the club or he gets injured. You know, then there's that conundrum. But Scales at the moment deserves to be in there due to his form. Like I, I know there'll be a lot of talk of the fact that Lagerbelka isn't in the the stone subs bench, but neither's Navrovsky. And Celtic paid more money for Navrovsky than yeah. they did for Lagerbelka. Again, that is what around about seven and a half million pounds worth of defenders that are just uh, that are nowhere to be seen. It's good to see Quan today on the bench because you know that look, there's a signing that he made in the summer that's making the bench at least. But Tilio is not on the bench, so that's another million that isn't getting used. I know it's a big squad. The squad is is convoluted with players. There's so many players to try and fit into these big squads. I'd actually advocate for the Italian league. Um, the Italian league sub benches because they seem to name every single player that they've got. Um, but this is the problem that you've got, you know. And, um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a mess with regard to the centre back position. I think John Kennedy was saying that without saying that. Um, yeah. Is that we need to control the numbers better in January? I think at least two or three are going to leave. When you think about Kobayashi, who hasn't made a match day squad in ages. Um, yeah. Phillips, Phillips, that would just be a natural conclusion to his loan deal. And you think that the other casualty will be Lagerbielka, who's only been there for <clears throat> under six months, but he seems to not be fancied. And I think the <clears throat> and the finger pointing should probably go to a number of places, but he should be going to the recruitment because if they couldn't see that he w- he wasn't going to be a good fit for the way that Brendan Rodgers was going to play, then why are you signing players for Brendan Rodgers? And more importantly, why is Brendan Rodgers back at the club if you're signing players? that are not going to go with his philosophy and style of play. I just don't understand it. I thought that Celtic had moved on from that. The fact that they'd licked their wounds, they realised what happened with Brendan Rodgers the first time around. That's the reason why he left. That's one of the reasons yeah, why yeah. he was getting handed players. Yeah. I don't know if it's either a misfire from Brendan Rodgers, he's yes the deal, and he's just seen the player and he's just not good enough. But, you uh, know, I think it, my... scouting, scouting, you see these players, you can watch game upon game of these players, Everybody knew him coming into the club that he was a slow defender, and yet the club still went and signed him. But I think that there could even be more at play, to be honest, because there was that talk of the fact that he was lined up with Starfelt leaving. If, if Celtic are going down this route again with agents that they did with Dudu, Dudu Dahan, working with specific agents, then you know, what's the point in a scouting system if you're just going to go with the same old people? Yeah, and I think I think that's what maybe Brendan Rodgers is telling you as well. He used the word terminado, didn't he, the first time? And I don't think he'll be the one uh, terminating his, his own contract. I think he'll just terminate players' contracts and just say, he's not my player, I want better. And he'll probably point the finger and ask why this guy was signed for what the guts of three and a half million, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. £3.5 million and Navrovsky, I know he's been injured. It's probably more damning on Lagerbielka because he's not yeah. suffered an injury in his time at Celtic. He just can't make match day squads. 
Um, so, I thought I thought it was a big show of where he was in the pecking order on Wednesday. I know he scored the winning goal and he was the hero on the night, etc., etc. Welsh started over him. Welsh has been injured for yes. months. Came back yeah. in and was instantly in the starting lineup. I shows you the hierarchy good. of the centre back is. And it also shows you the manager's thoughts on the centre back position. Uh, that Welsh came in from the cold to partner skills. And as I say, Gustav Lagerbjerg eventually came on because Skills tired and got an injury, didn't he? And he was forced to put him on, and he's in the right place at the right time to head the winning goal. But it's, uh, yeah, I think the manager's certainly making statements here, isn't he? He's and making saying, statements the fact that Yang isn't there too. Yeah, Yang isn't no, on the bench again. No more in terms of these, the, uh, these players that won't do or won't cut it for me. I think he's also saying... Uh, I will do it my way starting from January I'd like to think that was the case and uh, um, yeah I'm surprised with Gustav Lagerbjörk in terms of Celtic want to sell him but I think you have to say his contribution since he came in has been pretty scarce hasn't it and also uh, you know you were hoping that the other night might have represented some turning point but I think today's Actions from the manager in terms of not even in the match day squad tell you where his head's at in terms of Gustav Lagerbjelka. He told you the other week about training and he also told you how how much he values and he picks his teams based on what he sees at training. I've always banged on about that. The manager watches these players every day in training and clearly Gustav Lagerbjelka wasn't doing it for him. And uh, that's kind of, I guess this is, we're getting to the nuts and bolts of this story, Ryan, there's all, there's underlying currents in this, which we might not actually be aware of at this moment in time, but I think it's fair to say that the manager just doesn't rate him at all, does he? Doesn't see no. him as part of his team moving is, forward. The manager sees a lot more in training, as you yeah. said, that we all, we all do. You know, we can speculate, but we only see a player for at most 90 minutes and then a couple of minutes of training videos during the week. The manager sees him, don't know how long the training sessions last for. Let's just say they last for an hour, hour and a half. So if you add them up over the amount of times that he's seen a player, he'll have a yeah, pretty yeah. good gauge on how a player's doing and what he's not doing. The good things that he's good at and the things that he's he's not good at. Um, they, no, he didn't say anything about a lack of effort. That's, no, no. that's one thing that's got to be underlined as well. Um, it's not down to a lack of effort. It's just probably down to a lack of ability or a lack of being able to play in this Brendan Rodgers side, which... It's quite damning for the scouting, if you ask yeah. me. I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's, it's very, very poor scouting, if that's it's, the case. It's a slap in the face to the scouting system, isn't it? Matt Law and the recruitment team for a manager to basically come out and publicly have a pop at the player. And now, even after he's high of Wednesday night and Celtic getting their first win, the first, the first thing the manager does is axe him from the match day squad. He's not even on the bench. He's just axed from the match day squad. Basically, basically the reason that he was on the bench, and this is what this points to, is the fact that um, the bench was bigger in Europe. Yeah. The benches are bigger yeah. in Europe. That's the only reason why he was getting on the bench. That was the reason why Mikey Johnson was getting on the benches yeah. earlier on this season. He wasn't getting quoted. It was Maeda and Palma that were playing games. The fact that there was injuries then allowed him to get in yeah. into that squad. And now... He seems almost undroppable at the moment, which is which probably tells you more about <laughs> um, the wing options that Celtic have just now. Um, say something right now. If a bad is fit and raring to go, he will walk into this team. Uh, if yeah. he is anything about him, he will be he will be licking his lips at the prospect of getting back into this team because they are not firing on all cylinders. If Palmer doesn't have a good game, there's not really any creativity coming from the wings. Um, it's very lopsided in that regard. So. Yeah, you look at Maeda, you look at Abada, these players will be desperate to to get fully fit and get back into this team and stake a claim because, you know, the, the players at right wing, quite frankly, aren't cutting it at the moment, whether that be Johnson, whether that be yeah. Yang. They've not taken their opportunities and it's time for these players that have been injured to come back in the team and stake that claim as their own. Over 200 people joining us, 222. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, obviously, Awata was still injured, Ryan. Nobody yeah, asked I think so. I think... Uh, what I read as well, I think he was just that's a strain of some sort, I believe mm. uh, but nothing, no kind of prognosis on how long he's going to be out for, but yeah, lots of comments coming in, right, so I'm just going to read a few out, uh, as we always do 
Dennis Jameson, hi Dennis, how you doing? Good afternoon. No place for Narovsky or Lagabelka again on the bench. Kyogo likes scoring against Hearts. Let's hope he gets his shooting boots on today. We've mentioned that. Yep, we hope so too. Charlie McGavry, hiya Charlie. Lagabelka not even on the bench. No, he's not. Simon Fideni, feels a bit sorry for Lager not getting on the bench. Big Dom, apparently being sold in January, which if true seems crazy to him. It's coming from a credible source. There's no smoke without yeah. fire in that regard. Buzz Lop. Lagabelka is just too slow to be a Celtic defender. You can't get routinely done by St. Johnson strikers for pace and play a team like Celtics that play a high line. And Buzzlock comes back in, and he has a, this is a hot take. Celtics should be selling La- Lagabelka, and if they're a smart, aggressive, ambitious, and unsentimental club, they should be selling skills in January too. How's that for a hot take, he says? That is it's a hot take. That's definitely one way. That's, that's one way to describe it for sure. Um, I don't know about selling skills because he's been arguably Celtic's best defender this season. Yeah. I don't know what that would do for squad for squad harmony if then you were to go and sell your arguably your best defender. No, that's down to the fact that Carter Vickers has been injured for a large part of this season. Johnson is yep. now getting back on his good form at right back, which is good as well. Um, he's a very credible option. The only thing is. Is there now two credible options that can play that rotationary role in Welsh and Scales? Because it seems to me as if um, Stephen Welsh has upped his game a bit. His passing's yeah. a lot better. Um, I noticed that. There was only one slack pass that he made uh, against Feyenoord when he passed it to Matt O'Reilly. It wasn't even an, an, in, a, a, an inaccurate pass. It was just a poor pass because it put Matt O'Reilly under pressure and it was yeah. his, uh, his pressure that went and intercepted the ball from behind. Um, but it's good to see that Stephen Welsh, you know, if Stephen Welsh can be a credible option and fulfil that homegrown quota, then, you know, he ticks multiple boxes for Celtic. It's so Correct. important to get those quota of players um, because as, as much as um, as much as you can not name those players, you'd have a smaller squad as a result. And with the way Celtic play on three, sometimes four fronts a season, um, injuries will, will stack up and then you would be really, really struggling for players. So if if Welsh can do a job and he's the homegrown, he he might probably have more of a value than skills, purely yeah. down to the fact of that homegrown um, for Celtic. Not in terms of monetary value, but I would say, well, maybe in terms of monetary value as well, because he's just signed a new four-year deal. But he's got more of a value to Celtic at the moment because he's a homegrown player and he's a player that is contributing to the first team as well. Um, he's a credible option at the moment until otherwise, to be honest. Yeah. 1967 Doc comes in and says, if Lager didn't come on and score a goal, which a granny could have scored, no one would be bothered. He's not any better than Skills and Welsh, and Celtic spent money on him. Celtic need a major upgrade. Yeah, Hazel he's Finn, not really much of an uh, upgrade on those players, unfortunately. Hazel Finn, transfers in were a total mess. They certainly were. She comes back in and says, it really worries her with the next transfer windows. Brendan Rodgers will want strikers. She's worrying about Kyogo. She doesn't think he fits what Brendan Rodgers wants. And to let him go would be criminal. That would come out in the wash, I guess. And Rooster comes in and says, No Yang, Tilio, wouldn't I go home? Lagabielka and Navrovsky in the squad, all fully fit new signings. I think that says a lot about the transfer policy, Ryan, and the recruitment, as you said. Yeah. I, I, I just I just realised that home wasn't on the bench there. Um, it's difficult to keep up with all the players that Celtic have signed that don't make match day squads. Um, now, I know that's a problem with the fact that they've got about 32, is it something like 32 first-team players that they're trying to deal with and put into the team in some moments. I know some of them will be on loan, but, um, you, you know, some of those signings, the signings I've made that just aren't making an impact. And yep. it calls some jobs into question. I'm not calling for a sacking or anything like that, but it calls some jobs into question because if, you're, if your job is to scout players and identify players for Brendan Rodgers to use in the first team and they're not getting picked by the manager, I think that's a pretty damning indictment on where the scouting is at the moment. Yeah. Um, as much as we want to talk about today, I just think there's larger issues at play as well with regard to the scouting. And that won't all change in one transfer window. It's not as if a magic wand is going to be swirled and that will all be changed. This is going to take a couple of transfer windows to really get sorted. But at the same time, you've got to sort what's on the pitch as well and try and improve. So... I think you'll probably see a lot more outs than ins in January. And to be honest, the squad needs it. We were talking about that. Remember when we were doing the transfer deadline day show? We were like, yeah, we thought there would be more outgoings. You know, you've still got James McCarthy at the club who's picking up a wage doing nothing. 
Benjamin Segrist is just doing nothing. He's sometimes making a subs bench in Europe, but even then, that's few and far between. So many players that just aren't making an impact at Celtic at the moment, and it's just costing money that Celtic could be using on first-team players. And I think that's what he is Brendan Rodgers' biggest bugbear, isn't it? How long has he been talking about it? He's been talking about it long before the January window's rolling along. Talking about trimming the excess fat off the squad for past two or three times he sat in front of press, hasn't he? And he's not been nailed down to specifics because he won't talk specifics. But he's certainly aiming a few warning shots over the bow saying, you better believe there'll be players leaving, you know? And as you say, this will, this could take two or three windows to actually sort out because of the recruitment being uh, very poor in the summer, let's say. The recruitment being poor in the summer, Ryan, has cost you Europe after Christmas, let's be honest. It's cost you Europe after Christmas. It's cost you going in the League Cup as well, I would say. Yep. Because better, better players in would have made that game essentially not not a walkover, but you, Celtic would have had a far better chance if they had players in to do the difference. I think that game would have probably been different if maybe, for example, Palmer was on the pitch and you've got a player that can go out wide and, and get goals and assists. Problem is, for first team players and Palma and Bernardo to an extent, they're all first team players. They didn't get signed until the last week of the window. By then, Celtic were out of the League Cup. Um, you know, mm-hmm. they got away with it at Ibrox with a really, really good performance. But there has been improvements, improvements on the other side of the city. There hasn't been improvements with some of the players that Celtic have signed. In fact, some of them have regressed because you look at you, you look at the. You look at the improvements that were being made by home at the start of the season, that's now turned into a regression to the point that he's not even making the bench. Yeah. Now, a player like home would be so exciting to watch. Yang, that that sort of performance against Aberdeen, both performance against Aberdeen, away from home when he came off the bench and at home when he started, now he can't get on the bench. There's, there's players that Celtic have signed that are regressing. You know, Lagerbelka can't even get on the bench. Um... Navrovsky can't get on the bench. Paolo Bernardo can start in Europe, but he can't start in the league. Yeah. It's a strange one, isn't it's it? It's really strange. The whole team is strange just now, and I'm uh, glad uh, more people have, have been alerted to it because uh, it's very strange the way things are. And you look at it as well that, you know, Turnbull's been in and out this season, and there's still no talk of a new deal for Turnbull. And the clock's ticking down on him. The clock's ticking down, as you see, on Mikey Johnson as well. And... Every time they get their chance, they just don't seem to produce, do they? But they keep, they keep, why they keep getting chances, do they? Up, to be honest, if he's they, not signed a new deal, they keep getting he's, chances, don't they? That's the thing. And so I don't know. I, you know, you, you ask yourself: Is the manager really making a point here to those upstairs and saying this is this is what I'm left with? You know, something has to give here. And you have to let me do my own thing in January and bring in the players I want. Don't know if it's a, you know, as I keep saying, warning shots over the bow, but as you say it. But, and I said that last week, didn't I? Uh, you thought I was having a go at Matt O'Reilly, didn't you? But I was saying there some, seems to be something rotten in the state of Denmark. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the case, Ryan. I think... Uh, you maybe think conversations have been had about certain things, and I think there might have been some fingers pointed regarding recruitment, because it's all coming back to it, isn't it? It's all coming home to roost. Celtic, as you say, bundled out the League Cup. They've been bundled out of Europe. As much as the high of the other night was great in getting that monkey off the back with the win in the Champions League, they were two points away from third place. We spoke about it after the Feyenoord game. They could have won the fire in their game away from home or reduced to nine men. You know, fine margins. They, they, they turned up and played some decent stuff in Europe at times. So you say to yourself, they would have, they, it stands to reason if they had better players, they would have made a better fist of it in both that Kilmarnock game and in Europe. Speculate to accumulate, Tony. Uh, yeah, to yeah. So many times. Um, yeah, and... It's Groundhog well, Day when it comes to this. What's my... What's my, what do I always say? If you sign good players, what happens? You become a good team. It's funny, that, isn't results, it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, just it's, I mean, it sounds so basic and simple, but Celtic seem to have an uncanny knack of not signing good players. I'm not going to use the P word, 
because everybody talks, but you just happen to sign players that just aren't good enough for the club. At the moment, they're failed projects. Yeah, not even yeah, projects. Well, failed yeah. projects. A big fat F at the moment. Yeah, and you know the manager can only do so much. He is now telling you more or less, saying these guys aren't good enough. No, and and be prepared to see a few of them get shipped out. And I'm all and I'm all for that. I trust a manager more than I trust anything else at the football club. You know, as I say, the manager watches these guys every day. You know, he's well learned and well versed in football. And people can have their own personal thoughts about Brendan Rodgers, but we get back to it. And I still believe he's an elite level manager. But if you give him substandard players, there's not a lot he can do, is there? Yep. No, it's a uh, yeah. It's uh, I realise that we've spoke about um, so much with regard to transfers when it's that <laughs> lineup reaction and preview. But I think it's just such an important point that we talk about all of this that's going on because it does affect the team. It affects the lineup. Look at the lineup today. You know. Yeah. You correct. Look at the lineup today, and I know you're missing key players. We get that, and look at the bench as well because that is a weak bench for yeah. Celtic standards. Celtic's had far far stronger be- benches than what's been named today unfortunately but you know that's the cards that Celtic have been dealt with it's the cards that Celtic have bought as well they've got to play those cards until they can buy new cards in January or get rid of the old cards in January too but um, you know we'll you look at that, it's going to be a difficult you, game today it's, you look at that bench Ryan there's only three guys that you think are capable of changing the nature of the game should they need it oh Maida and Forrest yeah I would agree with that mm-hmm. yeah so many yeah. subs is that seven subs and only three of them you can say are potential match winners and game changers should nine nine subs and three as a third. Wow, that's incredible, isn't it? That's incredible. I'm just, I, I think it's. Um, I hope, I hope that it's a good Celtic performance today. It could be one of those days that's a real, real difficult difficulty for Celtic to to um, get to the fluent best. I just think there's a lot of factors going into play today. I hope it's not the case, but I've just got a, I don't know, a, a, the pessimistic side has, has came out today. And it's down do to the you, team, it's down to seeing the team. Do you have a foreboding sense of doom about today? Is that what you're telling me, Ryan? I hope to be wrong. I hope to be wrong in that regard. But um, if I was, I would feel positive if I was a Hearts fan seeing that that lineup in that bench. I'd think that my team would have a good chance today. It, um if they if they play to the levels and I know they've been up and down, um, but yeah they've got they've got talented players players that can hurt Celtic so Celtic have got to be at their best and you know make sure that some of the stories that are happening off the pitch don't translate to on the pitch just continue to do it because it can be a very very slippery slope. Over two hundred and fifty people joining us. Thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate it. And if you like what we do, we always say to you. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. It costs you four pounds for four months of access to everything that's written on the website, or eighteen pounds for a yearly subscription. Hit that button: www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Predictions, guys, get them coming in. I'll put you on the spot then, Ryan. What's your thoughts on today? What do you think? You think it's going to be a slog fest? <laughs> 2-1 Celtic. 2-1 Celtic. Chill Pal says this will be a tough game. 1-0 if he is lucky. If they're lucky, I hope he's wrong. I'm going to be a wee bit more optimistic. I'll say 3-0 Celtic. There you go. Hazel Finn saying, yeah, Hazel Finn saying 3-1. Uh, but there you go. And gloriously diabolical. I think that's what's called an oxymoron, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing short of a win, troops. If not, if not, we could play that mob and be top of the league. Uh, yeah, it's the mood music at the moment. That's the and a lot of people are, are casting their eye towards uh, the thirtieth of December. Edward Wyvos three one. He's saying he's agreeing with Hazel Finn. You said what did you say two one? You said right. I take it you're thinking that Shankland will score for Hearts. He's our main goal threat, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dennis Jameson. I think he'll go to Pastors New in January as well, wherever that'll be. Um, Maestro. Yeah, 
Yeah, he has a game. You have to suffer a big dom. 4 1 Celtic. Maestro 2 0 Celtic. He's saying. Uh, big Dom saying 4 1 Celtic. Well, that's nearly half an hour. As I say, over 250 joining us. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Try to read a lot of your comments out. Uh, 6 0 Celtic. There's the eternal optimist says. Kyogo Hatchick says Snade 1967. There you go. But we thought we would talk about the bigger picture with Lager Bielka and signings as well. But when you look at that team today and you look at the bench, there's, you know, there's, I think somebody put in the comments there could be trouble in paradise. Don't know if I would go that far, but there's something no right in that, right, Ryan? Um, potential, potential trouble in paradise. <laughs> but we'll reconvene after the game to discuss that for good or for bad. Yes, good show, says Greg McVeigh. Thank you, Greg. 3-1, he says... Eileen Feeks, afternoon, Eileen. How are you doing? Regular contributor, Celtic 2 0, Hearts 0, she's saying. There you go. Guys, I always say it's result dependent. Uh, and someone put up in the comments earlier, has Tony not got a season ticket? Well, the fact is, myself and Ryan alternate who goes to games. Ryan's got a season ticket, haven't you, sir? Yes, I got the my, home games, you got the away games. Yes, my father and nephew have season tickets. I have season tickets available to me if I want. But yeah, uh, Ryan does the home games. I do the uh, I do the away games, which is how we work this Celtic way between us. It's it's mutually convenient, isn't it, Ryan? We we, we make it work, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah, teamwork makes the dream work and, and all that. So yeah, um, there's always somebody present at the games, whether that be home or away. Yeah, that's the way we work it. And that's the way we like it. So if you're at the game today, guys, enjoy. If you're watching it like myself. Uh, Enjoy as well. It's always result dependent. Ryan, we will reconvene for good, bad, or for worse. Uh, here's hoping we're talking about another wonderful Celtic victory and Celtic increasing the lead at the top to back to eight points. Albeit Rangers would have two games in hand, but they'd have to go and win them. But that's all we can ask for today, Ryan. A clinical professional job today from Celtic. Just go out and get the three points. Yep, absolutely. Just get the job done um, and we can talk about the other stuff after the game but as long as the it's result dependent as always as long as Celtic can get the win then that's all that matters guys we will see you after the game at some point once the work's done once the Q&A's are all done we'll have the instant analysis up as it, as it says in the tin instantly or as close as to after the game as possible Cell 88 says 2-0 take that just take a victory today and see what's happened but here's hoping Amida comes back into the side and gets on at some point, Ryan. Look forward to seeing him back in the team. Take care. Enjoy the game, sir, and I shall speak to you soon. Cheers, guys. Thank you.